going to um, really be a good one for everybody worldwide and um, hopefully very few disasters to face. But that doesn't always happen. So um, I think we should prepare for what will be coming. Um, <clears throat> During this um, introduction to validation, I'm going to take you through, first of all, some of the boring stuff um, of how to uh, actually go about validating and what it's all about. And then I'll take you into the, the, the actual mapping itself and how to validate. Um, uh, if there are any questions, uh, please type into the chat and um, uh, we will try and help you wherever we can. Right, tonight. Getting started. Um, what we are doing is your introduction. Um, the tools that we will be using is the Tasky Manager and JOSM. So let's get started. Um, and we can start off with <clears throat> what is validating about? Right, there are two things um, to start with. Um, most important of all, um, all the mapping that we do is uploaded onto the OpenStreetMap database um, and is rendered on the OpenStreetMap. So we have to maintain the mapping uh, in accordance with OSM standards. So it's very important that we do know and understand OpenStreetMap, the tagging scheme that they have, and the, the roads, rivers, and waterways um, uh, features that they uh, um, stipulate should be done. Okay, um, but because we are humanitarian and disaster mapping, we are mapping specifically for the teams that are in the field trying to do their job. So we have to meet the requirements of the teams in the field. So each project that we have uh, mapped is set up specifically for them to be able to do their job. Um, so we need to read the instructions of each project carefully to understand what it is we're trying to achieve with that project. Uh, some projects will be um, buildings only. Uh, other projects will be um, land use only. Uh, some others will be buildings and roads. So we need to read the instructions carefully, please, so that when we start validating, we know what we're supposed to be producing for those teams in the field. Right, now, as I said, um, <clears throat> To meet OpenStreetMap requirements, we have to have the correct tagging and the correct depiction of features. Now, <clears throat> um, your Bible is going to be the map features uh, page on the wiki. And <clears throat> you should all familiarize yourself with that. And <clears throat> While you're familiarizing yourself with that, it will also explain some of the things that you are doing and why you're doing them and give you a far better understanding of your mapping. So I would like you to use the map features um, uh, wiki page as your Bible. Uh, please read that, look at it, understand it, certainly for the features that you're working on. So go through and have a look at um, buildings and, and how they're drawn and why they're tagged the way they are. If you have a look in the chat, um, I will try and drop in the um, uh, the URLs for each item that I'm talking about so that um, uh, you can connect to them or copy them um, uh, onto a document or memo or whatever it is that you're, you're using. Right, now, what is it that we are going to be looking for when we are validating? Um, 
uh, so many people ask me, what is an accurate map? Um, well, an accurate map is what is needed for the people to be able to do their job. Uh, it doesn't have to be a pretty little picture or a really smart drawing or anything like that. Um, it has to be a good map that meets their requirements. Uh, so the alignment of features, they have got to align with each other. So it's no good if you draw uh, just buildings and the roads and rivers are all running through the buildings and the land features are running through the buildings because the people in the field are not going to have much confidence in that kind of map. So when we validate, we have to look at it overall. Are the features aligning up with each other? Buildings on the correct side of the road or are they overlapping the road? Are they connected to the road? Um, are they in alignment with the background imagery as stipulated in the instructions? Um, please read the instructions. The instructions will, should tell you whether you need to align the existing map features to the imagery or whether you need to align the imagery to the existing map features. Please be very clear on that so that you know which way around you're supposed to be looking at this. So <clears throat> align the features with each other. Uh, roads, rivers, the buildings have all got to be um, the correct distance away from the roads and rivers. Uh, all of those features help the people on the ground to find their way about and understand uh, where they are and what they're doing. Now, as I've mentioned before, the one thing that you really need to do is to read the instructions carefully, because that is going to explain to you why the mappers are mapping the way they are. That will explain to you um, <coughs> that the mappers have got the right idea and are mapping correctly to the instructions or the instructions have been misleading and the mappers have got the wrong idea and they're doing things wrong. If the, the case is that the mappers have got the wrong idea, you need to contact the author of the project and ask them to change the instructions or you're going to have a lot of validating and fixing up to do. So please <coughs> um, read the instructions carefully so that you understand what is happening and what should be happening. Now, it's not all just about the map. <clears throat> we also have to think about the mappers. So what we need to do is give the mappers encouragement. Just remember, a lot of them are sitting at home by themselves and have no idea whether they're doing things correct or wrong. Um, <clears throat> But we need as many mappers as possible to be mapping. So we need to give them encouragement to keep on mapping. But most of all, we need them to improve their mapping. So give, we, we give guidance on how to correct their mapping errors. To do that, you would also need to have some idea of how people map on the ID editor so that you can tell them how to look for a thing or to square a building or how to continue a road or um, whatever is needed by them. So please um, uh, have a look at the ID editor and have a little bit of an understanding of that um, tool as well. But you are ambassadors, you are being presenting hot to the mappers. The first contact that they have may well be you contacting them to say, hi, thank you very much for mapping with us and for contributing your time. Um, your mapping is great, thank you. Um, just please remember to square your buildings by selecting the outline and pressing Q on your keyboard. Uh, thank you very much and please keep mapping. So we are going to be nice, we're going to be pleasant, we're going to speak to them because they are just setting out and they've got a very steep learning curve. Be polite, be kind, be helpful. Right, now, what is our target? Um, <clears throat> We want to concentrate on achieving quality over quantity. 
So in other words, I don't want you to have the idea that you are going into that task manager and you're going to try and turn all those task squares green so that it looks that ah, 100% validated, that's great. We need quality mapping. So we need you to stop and look at the mapping and make sure it is correct. Uh, only by doing that will we help the teams in the field do their job effectively and efficiently. Uh, without good maps, they're waffling around in the dark. They don't know where to go. They don't know how much equipment they need. Um, they don't know how many people they're going to need. Um, they have no idea. So please work on the quality of the mapping. And your own quality of mapping as well, because as you do this, you will see things that other people will do and you will say, ah, yeah, oh, oh okay, I must remember that. That's something new for me. So um, you will also learn from, from doing the validating. What I want you to do is to bear in mind that hot disaster activations should be a matter of priority over the other projects. <clears throat> so please check for hot disaster activations. These will be landslides, hurricanes, earthquakes, um, typhoons, cyclones. Um, all of these are needed urgently. Um, so good quality mapping needs to get to the um, teams in the field so that they can rescue people. Um, and find uh, people who are desperately in need of help. So please look for the hot disaster activations. They are the first ones on the task team manager that you see, and they will be marked as urgent. Look at the title. The title will also help you to see if it is a disaster or not. It may very well be that <coughs> it is, um, uh, managed by HOT. It will have <coughs> the HOT logo at the top of the disaster as well. So HOT disaster activations as a matter of priority. Time is of the essence. Just remember the longer those people are out there without help, the more likely they are to end up dead. So we are saving lives by giving those first responders quality mapping. Right, how would we go about this? We first of all, we want to validate all the task squares that are mapped by beginners. <clears throat> the beginners are the ones who are making the most errors and mistakes um, <clears throat> as they're busy learning what they're ex supposed to do and what is expected of them. So please, we must check for the, the task squares that are mapped by beginners and give them feedback, whether it is good or bad mapping. Just by telling someone, thank you very much, you have got it right and you're doing a great job, <clears throat> is a great encouragement for, yeah, and I, I feel happy with myself because um, someone has contacted me and they're very happy with my work. So. Please give feedback, whether it is good or bad mapping. Um, the bad mapping, um, that's a very bad choice of wording. It's not bad mapping, it's inexperienced mapping, uh, people who are still busy learning. So please treat it as such and um, be polite and kind, remember. Right, um, I picked up this saying, it was um, uh, done by one of the hot staff on one of their presentations, and I think it sums up what it is exactly we're trying to do. By producing the correct mappings, we are going to get the right people with the right equipment to the right place at the right time, and that is going to save lives. Um, <clears throat> I remember Ivan Gayton from uh, Medicine Sans Frontier coming to one of our London mapathons. And he told us what happened in Haiti. 
There was an earthquake there in 2010 and HOT jumped in and we mapped the whole of the city of Port-au-Prince and <clears throat> that mapping was then uh, uploaded onto OpenStreetMap. Two years later, Medicine Science Frontier had to fly in um, because there was an outbreak of cholera in the temporary camps that were still there. Now, Ivan says that normally when they fly in, um, they find that uh, they have to sit at the airport and wait for instructions of where to go and what to take with them and what to do. So they would be sitting waiting for maps and instructions before they can do anything. But when they flew in there, they were ready and prepared. They knew how many people were involved, how much equipment they needed. They knew how many people to take with them and they knew exactly where to go. Why? Because they had the map already downloaded onto their tablets before they left the airport on their way. So all their planning, all their equipment, their logistics, everything was done in advance. And as his words were, they hit the ground running. And he says that is so important because time saves lives. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have to try and get quality mapping to them as quickly as possible. Right, I mentioned the two tools we're using where we'd be doing our mapping through the tasking manager. And <coughs> we will also be using JOSM the Java OpenStreetMap editor, because this has all the plugins and map paint styles and tools for you to do a good job, to help you to do a good job. Right, these are the JOSM plugins that you will be adding to your JOSM which will really help you to do the job properly. Right, <clears throat> the building tool. Um, this will be the one that is the most extensively used. So make sure you've got that plugin loaded onto your JOSM and that will really, really be helpful. Imagery offset is also quite an important one, which will help you very quickly and easily to do your offsets. The measurement tool comes in very handy. Um, you can measure the width of a road to work out. Is it a path? Is it a road? Um, <coughs> uh, a, a road would be 1.8 meters or wider. If it's less than 1.8 meters, it'll be difficult getting a four wheeled vehicle down there. So. Um, you can actually measure to see if it, uh, to give you an idea if it's a path or not. Just bear in mind when you're measuring that in the, uh, if the imagery is in the summer months, there may be vegetation that overgrows the road slightly, but the result is that the road may be a bit narrower in the summer than it is in the winter, or appear to be narrower. Um, it's also good to measure the width of the waterways. Um, if it's 10 meters or more, we generally like to have a, a river bank showing as well to show it as a polygon or a multi-polygon if there are islands in it. Um, so that measurement tool also helps. It also helps you when you're drawing buildings. <clears throat> when you draw a building and you can see it's only one meter long, it's probably a dog kennel or a chicken coop or something. And certainly a human being could not. So that would give you a bit of an idea of what the size of the building you're drawing and whether it's feasible that, that someone lives there or not. Uh, so that would give you, if it's three meters or bigger, you, you, you have a possibility. The terracer tool is when you're doing um, cities and towns with a long rows of terracing, um, then this helps you to divide that up quickly and easily. So get to know the terracer tool, that's very useful. And the Utils plugin too <clears throat> um, adds a, a quite a, a good range of extra tools to your arsenal, and I'll show those to you when we go to the JOSM.
Right, so those are useful plugins for you to have. Right, another useful tool in JOSM will be the map paint styles. <clears throat> now the map paint styles is a set that gives you visual um, information um, on where errors are. So it's an additional help for you to quickly and easily see where the errors are. I've posted the link in the chat, so you can copy that down. Um, <clears throat> There is a very useful tools there um, called the missing maps validating tool. So um, <clears throat> you can use that and it will give you a, but I'll show you that when we do JOSM. So map paint styles, familiarize yourself with the map paint styles and how to use them. Here are some other um, useful validation tools. When we're doing a clean up, um, after validation, we can do the whole area using any of these OSM Inspector, Keep Right, and Osmos. So <clears throat> those are very useful tools um, for you um, when you're doing some more advanced work and cleaning up things after we have um, finished our validation. So those are also now in the chat for you to copy um, and paste so that you will have them somewhere to use and refer back to and look at. I am introducing quite a few items for you to go in and do your homework and that, but um, nothing is easy on um, OpenStreetMap. Um, everything is a learning curve. So please be patient with yourself and understand that you still have all of that to learn, understand, to become a good validator. And the more you unformed decisions as to what is and isn't a good map. So please um, use all the tools available to you and get to understand them. Right, if you want to become more involved um, and become a coordinator or help the hot team um, to um, assess uh, and work with and create projects, then please um, go on to the hot courses and complete the hot courses um, for whatever you like. Um, if you would like to become more involved because you have the time uh, as a coordinator for the validation, then please do so um, and do the validation section and we will bring you on board with the team. If you want to just do validation for now, then <clears throat> the validator request form, put your name on the validator request form. Uh, we will assess your um, uh, uh, experience level and we will look at your mapping to see if you've got the right idea and your mapping is good and we will then add you to uh, validation teams uh, so that you can um, really validate on those uh, projects which are only open to validation teams for um, validating. Right, <clears throat> you've heard me talk about the teams in the field, um, but to understand a bit more, let's take a look at who they are and what they need. Right, <clears throat> the first thing to understand is how does the mapping help the first responders and the humanitarian teams to do their work? Um, they often ask just for buildings. The buildings give them ideas of where the con aggregations of communities are, how big those communities are, and they have worked out various algorithms for various countries to, to work out a possible population size from the size of buildings. 
So just getting the size and shape of the buildings correct is a great help to them because they know where those people are. And then getting the roads right will help them to understand how to get there and what's involved in getting there. Um, <clears throat> Uh, is there a, a, a river crossing the road and is that road crossing a ford or a bridge or a culvert? Um, if it's a, a ford, um, it's heavy rainy weather, can they get through that way? Uh, will the river be in flood and they are blocked off? So all of those things are decisions that they have to take and check. So our mapping gives them that information. <clears throat> If we uh, draw the, the, the correct shapes, um, I've heard um, teams in the field come along and say, yeah, it was absolutely great. We're traveling down the road and we looked on the left-hand side and we saw that big L-shaped building. And on the right-hand side was the two trees and the two small buildings. Um, and we found that on our map and we knew exactly where we were. We knew that we were going to go over a bridge further up and had to turn left immediately after the bridge. So that kind of mapping helps them to get where they're going. Um, the kind of decision they need is not whether the, the road is dead straight or it's got curves in it. Um, if the road has got curves, they're going to follow the curve and not follow our map, which goes straight. What they really need to know is when they come to a junction, do they go left or do they go right or they, do they go straight to be able to get to where they're going? So our map needs to clearly show things like that. And that will help them with doing their work in the field. Just remember that <clears throat> it's not just them digging people out of rubble um, in a city after an earthquake. It's also them going to a place and say, right, we've had a landslide here. Um, the, the whole side of the mountains come down. Is there anything underneath that big mass of mud? And they will look on our map and they will see that we have mapped eight buildings in a, a farmyard. And Two of them have got blue roofs and one has got a red roof. So they will start digging. If they find the blue roofs, they know in what position they are and where to dig for the, the, the rest of the buildings. So that is important as well for them to find buildings underneath landslides um, <clears throat> to understand where uh, isolated dwellings are in a flooded area so that they can go out there in boats and rescue people sitting on the roof or trapped in their homes. So this is all very important to them doing their work. Let's look at, pro at a progression of our mapping. Um, on this slide, we have where it starts at level zero, where the map has minimal or actually no data whatsoever. Now that is um, not much help to the people in the field. Um, uh, it may just be a blank piece of paper to them because it's not very helpful. Once we get in and we start mapping from satellite imagery, this is level one, and we're putting in roads and buildings and <coughs> boundaries and waterways. And <coughs> all of this makes them, as I said, they can do a rapid population estimate. Um, they can see where the, 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 the cities, the towns, the villages, the hamlets are, um, and the concentrations of people. They can do a rapid disaster analysis and use the roads and everything as basic navigation. Um, once we have drawn it on OpenStreetMap, they can use their sat navs um, and um, tablets and phones to find their way around. So if we have drawn the roads carefully and we haven't dog-legged and put brakes in, um, the software for the satellite nav will tell them where they are and how to get to their next destination. So we need to make sure that our mapping at this stage is good and <coughs> uh, meets all their requirements. Once we've finished that, it goes over to people, the teams in the field and the, the local people to start adding information. Now, this is a stage where we generally get feedback from people in the field. Um, and they start telling us uh, the names of play street map, or they start adding it themselves to OpenStreetMap. So this is also a very important um, stage uh, for them to find their way around. To give you some idea, with the Ebola outbreak in West Africa, uh, which um, ravaged four countries, 
the medicine science frontier teams were having people walking into their uh, clinic um, and they said that they came from the village of Kampule and the teams would look on the map and they could not find Kampule anywhere. So what they would do was they would notify us to find Nkampula and please put it on the map so that they knew where it was so that they could get there and they could um, then check for any other people who may be sick or getting sick in, the, in, in that village. And that's how we worked with the teams in the field um, to help them to find the sick and the people that needed um, the uh, hospitalization or the uh, inoculation and treatment for the Ebola. And that's how we managed to control or help to control the Ebola outbreak. This works for cholera and um, other diseases as well. Uh, it also works for vaccination campaigns and logistics. One of the big ones that we were involved in was the malaria elimination campaign. And they would notify us that they were going to move into a new area and we would set up the projects and get that area mapped so that they would be able to get out there and do their job. Moving on to the level three and level four, this is stuff that's added by local population. <coughs> and this adds a lot more detail and information um, like facilities, schools, clinics, water points, bridges, tunnels. Um, and how important are they? Let's just say you've got a small village out in the middle of Africa. It is very important for the medical team to know that they have got clean drinking water there so that they don't have to bring masses and masses of bottles of, of water with them for their um, uh, health clinics and for their medic med medicine hospitals, field hospitals. So <clears throat> it's very important for them to know that there is a, a working water pump that brings clean water. If they find that the only water source is a, a muddy river, uh, two kilometers away from the village, that's not very helpful, um, and they will need to take their own water. So it is important just um, adding uh, water sanitation and water points. Uh, another idea of, uh, to give you some idea, is in one of the um, refugee camps, <clears throat> they had an outbreak of disease in one area of the camp. And to try and work it out, they got the map out and they started to take a look and they realized that the toilets had been placed too close to the water source. So that the seepage from the, 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 the field toilets was going into the ground and contaminating the groundwater. Um, and simply by moving those toilets far away from the water source, um, <clears throat> they managed to stop the, uh, the, the continued outbreak of, of disease. And they wrote that into their instructions for the building of future camps to make sure that the toilets are not placed anywhere near any groundwater access. So that gives you some uh, an extra idea of how important our maps are. So <clears throat> this is what we are going to be looking at and validating. Uh, level one, we will be looking at getting this base information as accurate and as good as we can get it so that they can do their job in the field. Right, now what you need um, uh, as, as JOSM beginners um, is to have a look at these two videos. They're about an hour and a half long. so. Make sure you have some time or look at them bit by bit. But <clears throat> JOSM for beginners um, would tell you how to use a whole lot of the tools. Um, <clears throat> and that will um, give you some idea and um, some information on just how good a tool JOSM is and how you can use it to map um, efficiently and quickly. Um, to move on to even uh, more advanced stuff um, <clears throat> is the advanced JOSM. Um, and please also have a look at that and move your mapping up to the next level and become um, uh, quite key players in our mapping teams.
Oh, heck, uh, Jeffrey. The um, the links for you. Um, <clears throat> so that you'll be able to copy them. Uh, yes, Ralph, um, have the links I can share them yes. as you continue. Um, okay, I've, okay, I'll continue. Um, I've got two hot courses, so it's just the request form and the two videos. Okay, right. Thank you, Jeffrey. Right, folks, I'm going to... Um, uh, change my screen now so I'm going to stop sharing for a moment while I change to um, my um, other screen. Are there any questions at this stage? Uh, no question is in the chat yet. <coughs> okay, folks, um, here we are. We have um, uh, got the map features page up and showing. And this is what I would like you to use as your Bible. Right, um, uh, this is called the map features. It's a wiki page. Um, it has an extensive contents index, um, which brings you through all of the various items that you would use, land use, highways, buildings. Um, so all of this is here, uh, waterways as well. Um, and this is a really user friendly uh, page. All of these are clickable links, so you can go to them. Um, the one that we use the most is the building page. I'll take you there. So here you have the key, which is the, the main category, and <coughs> the uh, value, which is um, the, what it is. So going to buildings, you can see here quite extensively, um, it tells you all the different um, values that can be used. So all the variants of the tag building uh, are here. Uh, we will, our most common one is using building yes, because we can't always tell whether it's an apartment or an office block or a bungalow or a shed. So read up and understand each one. Each of these is clickable. So if you go to bungalow, and click on that, it will open up the wiki and it will describe what a bungalow is. Um, it will give you also other alternatives to use. So please um, understand that you can have variable tags and understand the tagging, but because you cannot always tell um, what you're looking at from above, we will use the common tag building equals yes. Okay, so this is um, uh, looking at buildings. You can see it gives you brief in instructions. It gives you some visual idea, um, commercial use, um, religious use. So <clears throat> this is a very, very, very concise and accurate um, uh, idea of what you are looking at. 
Um, also have a look at the highways and learn to understand what all the different um, uh, features are on the highways and the classification of roads. Importantly, have a look at the unclassified um, <clears throat> and understand what unclassified is, um, as well as having a look at what the... Um, uh, uh, Ralph, I think we can't see your screen. You can't see my screen. Okay. No. Yeah, there it is. Thank you. Okay, right. Sorry. Um, sorry about that. Um, uh, don't know how that happened. Okay, this is a map features page. It is a wiki page. It is very user friendly. As we can see here, it has a contents list, which is um, uh, very extensive and very helpful. It gives us everything um, from uh, the waterways um, down here, waterways all the way through um, highways, buildings, roads. So looking at the buildings, um, all of these are clickable links so that takes you directly to where you need to be quickly. Having a look at buildings, as you can see here, the buildings um, quite extensive um, and the visuals down the side. If you click on any one of these, I mentioned bungalow, um, there's house here as well. If you click on house, um, it will take you to uh, buildings house and it will give you detail and information about uh, all of these. You can use detached static caravan. Uh, so um, it gives you alternatives to use and um, more information about it. So read up, use this as your Bible, get to understand what you're looking at. The other one, um, other ones to know are the, the common ones, land use, highways. Um, highways is, it gives you quite a long list. Um, the ones that you need to really understand is unclassified roads and tracks, because that's where the most errors and um, confusion arises. So get to know and understand an unclassified road is a public road that the people use to get to where they need to be. And a track is a private road for the farmers and the foresters to get around their property and get to their, their lands and get to their work. So um, that's a, a good way to understand unclassified and track. Have a look, residential roads should only be in built up areas, residential uh, towns, villages, hamlets, cities, um, <clears throat> and shouldn't be running through the countryside. If it's running through the countryside, it should be an unclassified or a track. Okay, so please, you can see here all the healthcare ones. So it's quite extensive. Um, please refer to this if you have any doubts um, or need to understand anything. And just looking through them, uh, understanding barriers, that's walls, fences, and things like that. <clears throat> um, boundaries, what are boundaries and how do they work? Look at the land use, because it's important to understand that the land use is not a boundary. The land use does not show you the extent of the town. It shows you which pieces of land are used for residential purposes. So don't confuse that with towns and boundaries, okay? Right, let's move on and move to the next tool. Are there any questions with regard to tagging? No, okay, um, let's move on then. And let's look at the tasking manager. So um, under the explore projects, um, <clears throat> we get a whole list of the projects that are available. And remember I told you that for disasters, um, uh, you would generally get the hot logo at the top and marked urgent. You can see in the title, it's a cyclone or a typhoon. Uh, there's Hurricane Eta and Iota. Um, so we can see here's a, a mapping for landslide risk. That's not actually a landslide as such. 
Um, there's mapping for food security. It's not um, an immediate disaster, it's planning for the future. So these are also important, um, but this is where we want to concentrate our priorities to save lives immediately. So <clears throat> please look for the hot logo and the urgent. It doesn't have to be a hot logo. It could be um, another operator or an OSM uh, group that as um, uh, doing the mapping um, or managing the mapping. But that doesn't mean to say it's any the less a disaster. It doesn't. It is still a disaster that needs help. So please, um, urgent project, look for the disasters and target the beginners to get their mapping corrected as quickly as possible. Right, now I told you that we are um, trying to concentrate on um, correcting the mapping and helping the beginners um, to build up their confidence and their good mapping. So you look down at the bottom here and that will tell you what level, beginner mapper, intermediate mapper. So we want to look for the beginner mappers. Um, if we want to really target beginner mapper stuff, we can actually sort um, here by looking for beginner projects only. Um, if you want to um, see and work on more advanced stuff, you can select different projects to work on um, and gain experience that way. But please concentrate on beginners and their mapping. Um, you can um, go for a difficulty level here as well, either beginner, intermediate or advanced. Um, and if you're looking for projects to um, validate, um, then just click on the validate projects. Um, but all of these need validating. If you have a look at the scroll bar here, um, I know you might be confused and think, all right, there's only two colors. It's not. If you have a look here, there's actually three colors. There's a very light gray, and that means the area has not been mapped yet. Then there's the dark gray, which shows the areas that the, or the percentage that has already been mapped. And then the red area tells you the percentage that has been validated. And you can see all of these, um, except for Hurricane uh, Eta Iota here, um, uh, are still in need of validation. Um, and some are still in need of mapping. Um, so you can see that. And there are quite a lot of beginner, beginner, beginner mappers out here in the high and urgent category. Um, there you can see one by um, Missing Maps, Medicine Sans Frontier um, is doing Denge fever in Honduras. <clears throat> right. The next point that we go to, um, Let's pick one. Um, if you want to go to a specific project, the project number is um, just needs you to type in. Let's just see. Um, I'm going to go to this one here. Uh, please allow for a slow internet. Okay, this is in the province of province two of Nepal. Um, <clears throat> And I'm taking you there. It is not an urgent disaster project, but it is um, a problem that they're going to be facing um, uh, in the sense that um, the impending flood season is coming up and people are um, watch, looking at food scarcity, uh, poverty, uh, loads of migrants returning, this sort of thing. So this area is important. Right. <coughs> So how do we go about? This is intermediate mappers. Um, so there aren't any beginners or shouldn't be any beginners here, but you can see the range of items that are being mapped. That's roads, buildings. Oh, one thing you need to remember is that the whole of the um, uh, tasking manager uh, does rely on you investigating and looking at things because you can open up various things from uh, the um, hover overs. So you can see here, if I hover over this, it comes up and tells me road, hover, buildings, hover, waterways. If I hover over the bar, you can see here that it tells me the uh, percentage that's completed or uh, mapped. 
If I go to imagery, it says any available source. If it actually says custom imagery, if you hover over that, it will give you the URL of the custom imagery. So all of that is available. Now this first page here, before you go to contribute, on this first page here, um, you scroll down and the important parts here is under coordination. It tells you that this is being um, coordinated by Kathmandu Living Labs and was created by Rosan. Now Rosan will be the author, the creator of the project. So if you have any problems with the project or the instructions or anything like that, that you want to convey to the Rosan, then <clears throat> you come to this page and you move down and you have questions and comments. Um, and you will type into the box at the bottom here. And as you type in, you will see that you get the choice of manager or authors. <coughs> Contact the author first and um, I tell them that the, uh, what you need to tell them about the project. Right, so you can see here, someone has already said, hey managers, this is tagged as a beginner map, but allows only intermediate user. Is it possible to update it to be coherent, right? So someone is already sending information. So if you read here, you can see there's one, two pages of items here that you need to read through so that <clears throat> you will understand any problems that they think they are having with this project before you start validating. Teams and permissions, okay. Um, if this is um, open to any user or it's only for intermediate and advanced level mappers or whether it's only teams, um, that you will find out on this point here. Right, then moving on, you go to contribute. Please be patient with my slow internet. <coughs> right, the first thing that you should be able to see is the instructions. This is what you need to read carefully. Have a look at the videos they're showing so that you understand what the mappers are being shown and told so that you will understand what they are mapping. Now, um, this is um, not completely precise because it doesn't give you immediate information with regard to the imagery. Uh, it doesn't give you any uh, immediate information with regard to the um, problems involved. All it does is show you videos and things. Now you can see here the tagging of roads. It has a specific wiki page for Nepal roads. <coughs> check for that kind of information because that will tell you why they're tagging things the way they are tagging. Now, I know for a fact that in Nepal, certainly in the mountains, there are, aren't actually any roads or very, very few roads. All access to the, the hilly villages is by path. And we had, when we had the double earthquake uh, in Nepal um, near Kathmandu, the mountainous region suffered massive um, damage um, and landslides and, and the Buddhist monks, monks in the area were taking backpacks of food all the way up along the paths to the villages to try and help the people. That was the only way, either with a donkey or with a, um, a backpack, carrying um, food and water to the people who needed it. So. Um, Please understand the area you're mapping in and understand the geography and the, the types of buildings. I like here, it tells you all the buildings here are rectangular in shape. And what seems like circular huts could be haystacks. So <clears throat> that helps you to understand better of what's, what's going on. So please read the instructions. Contributions um, gives you a list of all the people who are contributing. As you will see here, there's stars and half stars um, along here. Those tell you that these people are uh, advanced mappers. There's your hover over again, um, or they're intermediate mappers. Now, <clears throat> I can see here that this person here does not have a star. That means they are a beginner. They have not intermediate or advanced, but a beginner, but they've already mapped 90 tasks. 
So if they have got some poor mapping or bad mapping, that's going to need a lot of cleaning up. The same here again is another beginner mapper who has done 60 tasks. <coughs> um, and hopefully that that won't all be bad mapping. If you go down to the bottom, um, you will see people who have only done one task and you see quite a few beginners here as well. So just um, the fact that it is an intermediate um, uh, project does not mean to say that some um, uh, beginners haven't managed to creep in and do some mapping as well. So please check those. Um, <clears throat> on the map itself, you will get a outline area and that will be their area of high priority. So we would need to get that mapped and validated first and make sure that that is good <clears throat> um, quality mapping. Now we can also search this. Let's go up to the top. <clears throat> we can set this um, to just look for the beginners, in which case this will all turn to just beginners, okay? Um, as you can see now, there's quite a few beginners that are mapping on this and they've done quite a lot of tasks. So that might mean quite a bit of cleaning up to do on there. We can choose by change sets or by statistics. Um, um, please explore those and see what those are all about. Um, <clears throat> and you can see which mapping a person has done by simply clicking on the little plus sign and you can see here that only some of this person's mapping has been validated there's a whole lot of stuff here that has not yet been validated for this um, mapper you can see here is a beginner who's actually dentally validated a task so it would be important to go and have a look at that task um, to see what happened there. And we can see that up here, okay? But you will not be able to validate that in this method because the um, system does not allow you to do that. You would have to go to tasks. Um, this tells you up here, that that is task 401. You will go to tasks here um, and filter task by ID and you will say 401 and there it will be. And clicking on the three bars here will open up this panel <clears throat> and you will be able to look at it and have a look at the task detail and information. It says here bad imagery. Um, so that might be something interesting to look at. <clears throat> right here, the tasks, um, once again, um, this gives you the individual people. Um, you can copy the link if you're going to message someone and say this task needs some kind of information. Um, then you can copy the task link um, simply by click on the task and copy the task link. And that copies that to your clipboard and you can paste it into your comment or your instructions to someone. Okay, I'm clicking on the, the zoom to the map task and or you can go to the information to see um, what has been said in the past. Okay. You can open up your editor um, to have a look at that task and you can make comments if need be. So you can still see a task that has already been validated, but you need to go to tasks and the three bar link here. Okay, now we will be looking for the, sorry about that. We will be looking for the blue squares, the white squares are needed to be mapped. The blue squares are the ones that need to be validated. So as I said, um, we can look for a specific uh, person um, uh, or um, if we want to do everything, let's just say, we want to find the task by this person, then um, we will click on that and zoom out 
and there we can see the task there. <coughs> and if we want to validate that, we will um, doesn't say available for validation there. Uh, okay, my JOSM is not open, that is why. But <clears throat> you can see here, here is your editor of choice. You can switch that, so I can go to the ID editor um, <clears throat> and open up in ID editor. And I can see here that I get all of this coming up, right? Um, <clears throat> I will um, normally, uh, let me go back. Right, <clears throat> to set your editor of choice, you go to your own um, uh, settings, uh, click on settings and <clears throat> scroll down here to settings and set your default editor to JOSM. Okay, it's the same way as you can set your the language of choice. Um, it will tell you how to become a validator. You can learn how to do that as well. Um, and please mark in your country. That helps us to know where you are at and um, to understand that if I send you a message, you're going to be fast asleep because it's the middle of the night and I shouldn't expect a response too soon. Okay, so please set your... Um, editor in the settings. Right, so I'm going to resume mapping on that. Uh, <coughs> right. Now, in this part here, we have got the task number, the uh, project number and <clears throat> we have the instructions as well so if you um, want to check back to the instructions here you can do so um, but read look at the history um, you need to have a look at what is happening in the history and any comments and things like and activities um, that you need to know about um, the completion here if you have completed uh, completely have checked the task square and you think it is correct, you click on yes and you write a comment here. Um, uh, thank you to the person who um, completed the, the mapping or the task and <coughs> you, you thank them for, for their time and you give them any instructions that needed and you submit the task. If you say no, it is not <coughs> complete and still needs work, you must add a comment here stating what needs to be mapped, um, or what needs to be completed or what needs to be fixed up. So please put in the comment. If you put at and the person's um, uh, username, uh, they should get a notification about that. So um, then you will submit the task. Um, if the imagery is absolutely no good, of course, imagery is bad is what you will do. However, do not, if you, uh, if you have not completed the validation and you haven't finished the work that you're doing, please don't mark it as more mapping needed or mark it as validated. Select another task, okay? Please um, select another task and that will take you straight back out and revert that task back for someone else to complete. If you made a note of the task number, you can go back to that task um, simply by going to tasks and you can see um, all and have a look what was done here and you'll be able to see, go back to that and have a look at it again. Okay, now <clears throat> um, you saw that the task that I had had a red triangle, uh, I had a red lock on it when I went to mapping. Uh, a red lock means that that's the task that I was working on. A black lock means that there's someone else working on a task. So try to avoid um, 
selecting a task next to someone who is busy um, mapping or validating because otherwise you're going to have a conflict if you work on the same road that they're working on, okay? So uh, try to avoid um, doing work alongside someone who's already working on a task. Uh, that is helpful. The uh, uh, gold colored or yellow colored or orange colored, whichever you're seeing on your screen, um, means that more mapping is needed. It has been invalidated. Um, so those will need cleaning up and fixing. Are there any questions at this stage on the tasking manager? No, okay, right, I'm, I'm going to move on now. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to open my chosen. Right. Um, can you all see my JOSM? Yes, we can see your JOSM. Okay, lovely. Okay, folks, um, uh, this is uh, 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 the JOSM, um, and um, uh, I'm going to open up a file. To get things started. Okay, <clears throat> what we have here is a whole lot of tools along the top and a whole lot of tools along the side. To find these tools and add these tools, there is a little button here that you open up and you can see here that you get all of the various tools and things that um, <clears throat> you can use. Um, there's another button down the bottom here, which um, you can see uh, um, opens up quite a few more, right? So. There's two lots here that you can open and use. The ones that I use mostly is the layers, um, the tagging, the authors, and the validation. I have two others, the filters and the map paint styles. Um, so I've got all of those open. To be able to open one, let's close the, this map paint styles here at the bottom. Uh, let's close this one for the moment. So it's not there. How would I add map paint styles? I will go to the sidebar here. And if you hover over, it will tell you what you're seeing is this little palette. If I click on the palette, it opens up a new panel here, which then gives me my map paint styles. OK, I'm going to close that for the moment. And I'm going to move up. Um, I told you about the building tool. Here it is. That's an excellent building tool. Um, I'm not quite sure what's happened here, but I'm going to get rid of that and download it again. Right, there we go. Okay. Now remember, I told you about the um, Utils plugin 2. Um, that is this one here um, that gives you all of these, the terrace of building, reverse terrace, lat long, circle arcs, um, <coughs> uh, split adjacent ways, unglue. Now, what you need to also understand is that it gives you a whole list of uh, shortcut keys. Get used to using the shortcut keys. I use shortcut keys a lot. It helps me to quickly um, uh, map and it helps me to quickly do things. Um, and authors, I'll show you why authors are important. Um, you also um, can uh, edit and view 
Like here, if you want maps, map, um, what you would do is go to map faint preferences. And uh, here you will have all the map faint different uh, styles that exist. Um, and you can scroll down and investigate those. Um, some of those are here, but one of these are the missing maps, youth mappers one, um, and click on the um, upload to put it onto your active styles, in which case it will be there for you to use. Okay, so that's under um, view and map paint styles and map preferences. Okay, now I'll show you what happens when I switch on my map paint styles. I'm going to open up the missing maps youth mappers validator check and <clears throat> immediately you start to see things happening here. Okay, um, there are visual um, uh, checks that immediately tell you, hello, please look at me. Um, if I zoom in, I can see I've got a building here connected to a road. Um, and that's a big no-no, it comes up in red. Uh, the same thing here. Uh, here I have a building connected to a natural um, uh, woods. Okay, so that's also, um, they don't like here. It tells me that this is not tagged as building yes, it's building industrial. All the others are tagged as building yes, but I can see these are tagged differently. Um, so that warns me to just check, is this a beginner playing around and trying out things, or is that um, someone who understands and knows what they're doing? So right, here we are, we're at the, um, first stage of validation. I have chosen this task square. I'm going to switch off the map paint styles now so that um, we can concentrate on what we are looking at. The very first thing that I do is to check whether um, everything on this um, task has been mapped. Now, the quick, easy way to do that is to um, have your cursor in the um, select mode. So there it is in building mode. I press S on my keyboard and it changes to the select mode. In the select mode, I drag a square around the whole of the task and I let go. And what it does, it highlights everything. It selects everything in that task. Now I can see here, it gives me a whole list of all the um, uh, tagging that's on there. It also gives me a list of all the people who have mapped. Now you can see there's quite a lot. Uh, this person at the top here has done 80% of the mapping, but various other people have done mapping here as well. Now it may very well be that the mapping that has been done by some of the other people um, <coughs> is in actual fact something that was done on a previous project or one done by an OSM mapper who did not actually use a project to do the mapping. So be careful, um, the project is not necessary, the task is not necessarily only mapped by the person that marks it as complete. It could be mapped by someone else. So the person who marks it complete may not have made the mistakes. Now the way, <coughs> To check, let's put some imagery background in. I'm going to use Bing for this one. Right, the way that I check to see if this has been completely mapped, I can see that um, some of the roads are not showing up, but that's because the complete road is not there. I'm only getting the uh, nodes that are inside my task. That tells me that those um, uh, roads are extending outside my boundary. Um, <clears throat> so I have to be careful for conflicts there. And now I can zoom in and I can see here already um, uh, that some buildings have not been mapped. And I will have a look at how much of those buildings have not been mapped. And I'm seeing already there's quite a lot of buildings here. So I would invalidate this task and <clears throat> tell that um, uh, that all the buildings have not been mapped and they need to 
be mapped and will release and for the buildings, especially um, in the center part here, where there are buildings missing, and some to the right. Okay, there's some buildings here that have not been done as well. Okay, so that's a very quick, easy way of having a look at a busy task and see whether it has everything mapped. Now, another thing that, remember I said that the routing software uh, needs all of the, the, the roads to be complete and it needs them to be all connected. There's a quick, easy way of checking that. What I do is I select a main road that runs through the area, okay? And what I do is I hold down the control key and the shift key, the shift, Control and I press E. Now I press E on the keyboard and immediately that um, connects all of the roads. Um, if we have a look at my more tools here, um, uh, sorry, selection here, um, you can control shift E or connected ways. Now that works for um, waterways as well as uh, that's not what I wanted. That uh, works for waterways as well as roads. Um, it also works for boundaries to make sure that all the boundaries are connected uh, on a multi polygon uh, to check if the multi polygon boundaries are all corrected. So connected, so that is very helpful. So remember that, control plus shift plus E, um, <clears throat> and that works. Now this also tells me that a number of roads are not connected. Um, so they are not showing as connected. And if I zoom in to see why, um, I can grab here and that is not connected. Okay. so. That is the problem there. If I select the node that I want to move, I hold down my shift key, I M on my keyboard, and that then connects that to the road. Um, if I select this now and I use the shift control E, I can see now that that is connected. And the sat nav will now find a way out to these uh, buildings here. So um, if it's not connected, the sat nav will not understand that there is an intersection there and will not read the continuation of the roads. That goes for all of these others. Um, the sat nav will not tell me how to, because it does not understand um, that there is a connection here because it is not connected. Okay, so that is how you is something that um, the sat nav does not like either. And that's what I call dog legging. Now to see dog legging, you will need to hover over the roads um, here. Do you see this? Instead of this road being a continuous road all the way down to the main road, it actually dog legs off down uh, to this um, little uh, isolated uh, farm uh, group of buildings. Um, that is not correct. This should be um, <coughs> classified as a service road because it is a driveway that takes you here. So it should not be an unclassified road to start with. The only way that you can get that right is by um, splitting this road and <coughs> then the sat-nav will not see that as the continuation of the unclassified road. It will see that as an intersection and it can select either the service road or the unclassified road to take it to where it's going. So please help the sat-nav by checking that um, roads do not dogleg by having a look at what they are doing. Okay, um, 
this is not quite correct here. Um, uh, I can see that this one goes to there and this one goes to there. That should be a continuous road. So this would need to be split here. That should be a continuous road, but it dog legs here. Um, <clears throat> there's also something not quite right here, but we can have a look at that and sort it. So please, dog legging on roads, um, that also does not look right. I can zoom in and have a look. Um, <clears throat> and if I switch off my layer, I can see, I don't even see a road there. So something is very wrong here. Okay. So please check the roads and see what's going on with them and the dog legging. Uh, another thing is you see a built up area here. Uh, check the road classic. Oh, there's a horrible dog leg as well. Um, check the classification. This says the road is unclassified. Now that should not be. Um, it's not a road running through the countryside or connecting villages or anything like that. It is a road between in the built up area and it is a public road to take you to. So this should be uh, residential. All of these roads should be residential. Okay, so um, that would need fixing up as well. So this would be um, <coughs> uh, invalidated and, and ask in the comment that someone uh, using JOSM goes in and checks the roads and corrects the classification. Um, I see this is also uh, classified as a tertiary road. It's tertiary all the way there, but I don't see that it goes to a village. So let me have a look. There's no village here. Um, I don't see any villages. At best, it connects to another road. So I don't understand that should not have been a tertiary road. At best, it should have been an unclassified road. Um, and this is unclassified as well. And it links up to an unclassified. So this is not correct. Um, it also should be unclassified. So please check the road classification as well and um, invalidate and ask someone to fix it up. <clears throat> or once you've invalidated, you can fix it up yourself if no one is fixing it. Um, okay. Now, the next thing to do, of course, is to run the validation tool for your validation results. <clears throat> and that is make sure that nothing is selected inside your task and click on validation. Now, this was um, a, an earthquake um, that happened in Hokkaido, Japan. And this was validated by someone using the ID editor. So they did not have the JOSM validator. Now, the validator results here shows me that there's 70 items that need to be looked at. If I click on the little plus sign, it opens this up and it tells me a whole series of things that are not correct. Now, the ones that interest us on a buildings project is crossing building highway, crossing highway waterway, um, highways crossing. So we would look at that. Let's have a look at the building. Um, to get to the building, we select the, 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 the opened um, item and we right click and zoom to the problem. It immediately takes us to the problem. We can then see that this building is overlapping on the road and we want to have a look um, <coughs> Is it the road or the water, the building that is incorrect? Simply by su switching off the layer, we can see the building is correct, but there's no road there. So um, <clears throat> we can fix that quite easily just by deleting the road and that problem is solved. If there's too many problems, you've got 20 or 30 of these plus a whole lot of unsquared buildings, Please invalidate the task and ask someone to fix it up. Okay. We can see here, um, highway crossing. Um, 
and it says here highway waterway crossing we can see here is the problem um uh, there is no bridge there's no culvert there's no um uh, ford so this does not tell how the waterway and the road interact with each other and that is wrong it doesn't give anyone any kind of information at all so those are things that need to be fixed and uh, running your validation tool helps you and also checking with your map paint styles also gives you visual indicators where things need to be fixed fixed or looked at oh okay now how do you um check the work of um one individual um As I showed you, you um, and the whole area, you can see that it highlights everything. Now, if I just want to look at um, one person's mapping, I select that person on the, um, the, 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 the under the authors. Now I've got that selected, and all I do is I go down to the select button at the bottom here, and click that. Well, what it has done is it deselected all the other. Um, features that have been mapped by someone else and this only shows me the features that have been mapped by that mapper you can see it's just that mapper that's there um, i can do the same again and select a different mapper um, and select and i can see i get a different selection i can see that this mapper has been correcting the um, uh, outline for the um, woods natural woods. I can tell that they are correcting it because only the nodes that they moved have been highlighted. So this person has realigned the nodes um, in this area. Okay, and here you can see they've realigned some nodes and buildings here as well. Okay, so that's how you select an individual mapper and check their work. That way you can see um, if someone is making the mistake by clicking on a feature, holding down the control key and pressing H, and that will bring up a history panel. The history panel tells you the person was the originator of that task, so you, you know that that person is doing that task. You can see that they are using the ID editor to map with. So um, you know uh, if you want to give them instructions, you give them instructions regarding the ID editor. So just remember that Control H will bring up this information and detail. Okay, if you have a look at something else, uh, Control H, that item. Uh, was done back in 2019 and was corrected again um, in 2020, uh, both by ID editors. So there was no just check on the validation. Okay, right, that's that. Um, And no questions at this stage. <clears throat> Lovely. All right, I'm going to get rid of this one now. And I'm going to open up a different file. Right, we handled the highway classification on that last one. But here's where people have a bit of a problem. <clears throat> and that is once again, um, the countryside, mapping roads in the countryside. So we're going to have a look at this. Now remember, um, grab the whole thing first and have a look. Um, and you can see a whole lot of people have worked on this and fixed this up. Okay, um, so <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select 
a road and to see if everything connects up. Um, let's take this unclassified road here and check how that fits up with everything else. So remember, shift, control, and press E. And I can see pretty much that everything except there, everything connects up. Um, so all the connections are good. That is very encouraging to start with. There's just this one that does not link up and that looks like a service road. So something's wrong there. Right, <clears throat> I'm happy with that. It does connect up, but what worries me is is that these um, unclassified roads don't continue on through the area. And I have little islands of um, service roads, which should not be. Um, a service road should not be coming off a path or a track. A service road should only be coming off a public road, like an unclassified or a tertiary or something like that, <coughs> or a residential road. So something is wrong with those. Now I need to understand why this is happening. So I will go to this um, unclassified road here and find out why it's not continuing. Now I can see that this definitely looks like it should be the continuation of the road because this is wide enough to be a road, but that is a path. So um, that road would not connect along here. I have another problem. This is a track, that's a road, and there's a path in between. That means a four wheel vehicle cannot travel down the track and cannot reach the unclassified road. So this is floating. Um, it's like saying, you know, that road is isolated and that car can only go up and down that short section of road because it can't go anywhere else. Um, that does not make sense. So all roads should be connected. There shouldn't be any paths in between. Um, and that is what we need to look at. Now, the unclassified road should be the road that is taking you all through um, this area, connecting up um, all the isolated dwellings. You can see here, this is an isolated dwelling. Uh, there's another little uh, um, one. So uh, there sh should be a road that runs through here that connects all of these places so that um, the public can get to them. Now that does not necessarily mean it will be a road. It can be a path. Now looking at this, I would think that this is in actual fact not a track. This should be a path. It is quite narrow and it is also winding th through. So that would be a path. I'm looking now here. Um, this, now here I can see this is wide enough. Let's see, there's my measurement tool down the bottom. Uh, let's measure the width of this. Um, I go to my line tool or I press A on my keyboard and I measure the width of this. And if I look down the bottom there, it says this is three meters wide. Escape, get rid of the node you created by um, pressing uh, delete, shift Z um, and get rid of that. So this is three meters wide. So you can quite easily get a car down there. So this should not be a path. This should be a um, road that's linking all of these. And if that is the case, this would be the road that connects up to unclassified. So <clears throat> this would then say, split that, okay. And this and that should change. I can't do that because this is going off somewhere else. So uh, I would have to re-classify um, all of this as uh, unclassified road. So if we then have an unclassified road, a public road 
running through this area so that you can access the properties offered. If you think in terms of being in a town, you have to travel down the public road to get to the driveway up to the house that you are going to. The same situation exists in the countryside. You have to drive down a public road to get to the driveway or the path that will take you to the buildings of the house that you want to go to. So please remember that idea. Um, classified road is public road. Um, a track is a private road that they will use from their farm to their field. So that would be a track, except that it's too narrow. So that would be a path to the field. Um, but that would be a track to the field. Um, well, here, these would be mostly paths. OK. So if this was um, uh, all roads in this area here, <coughs> the public road would be here. Service road would take you up to the property and the track would take you to the farm uh, land um, from the farmyard. Are there any questions on that? Once again, no, no please. Check. Okay, once again, please check for dog legging because that is bad mapping and um, things should be continuous through the area as well and shouldn't bung off at a different, um, look at this one, it comes down, across, down. <coughs> um, so check of those for dog legging and make sure that um, uh, it, it is correct. Even the paths um, should not dog leg, okay? They should be uh, continuous on their own. So please check that and make sure. Remember I said that the important thing is the junctions. Um, they should be able to get in the rotation of a road, then you should split the road there and those should be individual sections and the sat nav can then make an informed decision. So please check the connections and the, uh, the intersections of the rows to see what is continuation and what is not. And here I can see that here is one that has not been continued. So there's no ways that they can see how to get from here to there. Okay. Right. <clears throat> no more questions here. I'm going to get rid of that. And <clears throat> I'm going to have a look at waterways. Waterways um, uh, are similar to road, but they're different. Waterways have a direction of flow. Uh, roads um, uh, can be two ways or one way or one way, the other way. But a waterway can't, it flows downhill. So it can only be one direction and that is the direction of flow. So that's the one thing that we need to make sure that <coughs> all of these, um, for instance, this flow, this. Um, so there's something wrong here. We can see the arrows show me that that is flowing up this way. That is incorrect. So <coughs> something is very wrong. Now, what we need to do is to look at the watershed. I've chosen this one because it's quite an easy one to see. What we're looking at is the waterways start in one place at a peak or a ridge, and they flow downstream to a, a, a more, a, a bigger river, which flows downstream to a bigger river, okay? And <clears throat> goes all the way down to a major river. And that would be, continuous and directional flow would be in that direction all the way. So all of these little tributaries should be flowing down into that stream, should be flowing down into that. 
and down to the main river. So we can see that um, they can be close together. They can be close together, but flowing in different directions. Okay, so please check that. Uh, direction of flow is important. The other thing is <coughs> that we need to check that <coughs> they're not flowing over ridges. Now, another easy help to see that is with your imagery and either the open cycle map or the open topo map. Open cycle map will open up and give you a set of contours. Now these contours will give you heights. So you can see here that's 850 and that's 800. So the water would flow from this peak in this direction down in that direction. So we can immediately see that this waterway is flowing in the wrong direction because the flow should be going down that way. So where does it go wrong? Um, the peak is along this ridge here. So that should flow down that way and that should flow down that way. So that's where the error is. Um, in countryside, you sometimes get ridge paths and that would also be a help because if there's a path running there, that might indicate a ridge, but that's not necessarily the case. It could be a road running down a valley. So please um, use the contours. Um, a great way of using this um, uh, uh, <coughs> open cycle map is to be able to see the imagery underneath. To be able to do that, I select the open cycle map up here. Um, I go to the eye here, I open the eye. Now I want to be able to see through this, so I choose my opacity and I reduce that down to about 50%. Now I can see through and I can see the um, uh, imagery underneath. I can reduce that even further um, if I want. And I can see that <coughs> the um, imagery underneath is a lot clearer, but what has happened is the contours have faded a bit. So I go to my gamma here and I increase my gamma slightly and I can see that that has now increased the intensity of the of, uh, contours. And now I have the contours overlaid on the imagery and I can see what is happening and where things are happening. So that's another way of being able to see what you're doing and checking the direction of flow. Okay, let's get rid of that and back here again. So we have direction of flow um, and <clears throat> to change the direction of flow is quite simple. Um, all you do is you select, a, oh, ouch. There I have dog legging. Um, that's also not very useful um, because that ends up with the waterway going in the wrong direction. I need to split this. So I hold shift on the keyboard. I select the node that it is joining to and I press P on the keyboard. Okay, that is split that. And now I can select this one. I can see that it starts at the road. That should be there. I can delete that, delete that. And I select this and I press R on my keyboard. R tells me, do I want to reverse the waterway? Yes, I do. And that has been reversed. It is now flowing in the correct direction. <clears throat> so R on the keyboard um, and that reverses the flow. All waterways will flow down towards the next major river or dam or sea reservoirs, natural water features. So <clears throat> everything flowing here would flow down into that one and anything here would flow down into here and that is continuous in that direction flowing down there and that will be going on to another major river or a lake, dam or sea. Once again, as I said, if you select a waterway, uh, shift control E, and it tells you if they are all connected. And I can see that these are all connected, <coughs> um, except that one there, that is flowing down to a different 
waterway system, so it's not connected. So um, this in my task is all looking very good. Do we have any questions at this stage? No questions. Right, okay, we'll move on to the last item on what we're doing. <coughs> Right, Jeffrey, can you mute yourself, please? Yep. Thank you. Okay, lovely. Right, okay, we're moving on here. Now, uh, this is important, our, our last item, so let's just um, get this over with. <clears throat> and that is, remember I said, the connecting of waterways and roads. Now, this is important enough for me to tell you um, uh, all about this and what we should be looking for. So um, here we have the Caledon River in South Africa. It's quite an important river. And I chose this because it has some very good examples. Um, this is a bridge, as you can see, it has bridge, yes, and layer, and it has the uh, road uh, classification as well. Um, let's have a look at this. Um, to identify a bridge um, is, is, uh, has some features. Uh, one of those features is that there is a difference in the texture or the uh, sectioning of the road. And you can see there's a discoloration um, as the road goes onto the bridge and back off again. We can see that there's some bald sections along the sides of, of the road. And we can see this deep dark shadow, all indicating that there's a bridge here, which means that the road goes over the river which is why we then put the layer one. Okay, now um, let's have a look at how that is done. Um, <clears throat> and I will come up here. Now here we have a bridge. I can see it's a bridge. It's got a discoloration and change in the road and it's got the deep shadow and it's also got little side walls as well. So we can see that that is a bridge. So how do we um, construct a bridge? Uh, we first of all need a node at one end of the bridge and a node at the other end of the bridge. So by dragging the little X, we create nodes at both sides. We select the one, we hold the shift key, we select the other and we press P. Okay, that splits this piece of road away from the other two, right? So that makes that a single piece. We then add the tag bridge and bridge yes, okay? And click okay. And that has given us a bridge. But now we need to show that the bridge goes over the river. So we select um, that again and we add layer and the layer is one because it's above the water so we say okay so there we are the bridge is on the road and it's above the water if i draw in a waterway here i press a on my keyboard and i just quickly add a waterway here i select that i add waterway and I choose that as a river. Okay, and there I've got, that should be waterway. Um, edit that, that's not saying waterway. Waterway, okay, and that's a river. Okay, now if I run my validator, it tells me that there, are some errors, but that's not one of them. Uh, 
ओके नॉट कनेक्टेड टू अदर वाइज सो दैट्स व्हाई दैट इज हाइलाइटेड बट इट इज नॉट रॉंग दैट इज करेक्ट फॉर द वैलिडेटर बिकॉज द द ब्रिज इज a layer 1 above the water so that works <clears throat> okay now um the next one that we will look at is a culvert if i switch off the road i look here i don't see any discoloration of the road i don't see any change in the road i don't see anything happening here but what i do see underneath here is the shadows of some a uh, concrete culvert going underneath the road so i know i can see that this is an embankment road is built up and there is a culvert running underneath now <clears throat> the culvert is on the river so let me quickly draw the river in press a on my keyboard to get my tool and i draw my river in select add waterway river okay and i've got my river there now <clears throat> once again i need a node beforehand and a node after but i'm going to show you river i i split the road for you Well, I'm going to show you that we have a nifty tool here, um, which is called a double split. Now, if I click on the double split, I can select a node before the what the, the 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 culvert, and I select a node after the culvert. And immediately it comes up and says, "That's a waterway. Do you want a tunnel culvert?" I say, "Okay." It splits the river immediately. and it retains the fact that it is a waterway river but it adds the tunnel culvert and it automatically adds the layer minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 shows that it is below the road so it runs underneath the road <coughs> the so if it's on the waterway it needs to go minus 1 if it's on the road it will be plus 1 that will also now satisfy my validator and to say that that is now correct now the last one that i want to show you is where the road and the river are at the same level the road runs through okay we can see the road running down here now this is a good example because the road actually changes color as it goes through the water and comes back out the other side <clears throat> so we can see that that's a continuous road let me add that so i press a on my keyboard and there we go select that um i'm going to add highway highway and i'm going to make that unclassified okay and add my river a select that add waterway river okay now i've got the two now this is the only time where the road and the waterway share a node and this is because they are at the same level so i press a on my keyboard and i move my cursor until the river and the road are highlighted i press once and i press select now that gives me the node and the node is ready to be tagged i add to the tag i add here <coughs> a tag tunnel now that's culvert this is ford so i press f o r d ford and it is a ford Yes. Okay. Ford. Yes. I press OK, and it adds a Ford there. Now that will also now satisfy the validation tool as being correct. Right. Thank you very much um, for um, bearing with me and listening to all that we have to say. 
Um, and please, um, if you want to become a validator, please use the link that was uh, um, for the validator request form and add your name to the list and we will assess you. Um, thank you very much for your time and listening to uh, this validation training.